I've just finished setting the intonation and I had to wind it right back to the back of the bridge to get it to, to come off. It was a bit sharp all the way on the on the um, on this fret over here. On a, so what I did was I actually made sure these notes over here, which is where you mainly play the guitar, were perfect. And if it started to go a bit sharp, um, then I'd bring it down a bit so it was a little, might be a little bit out here, but it's absolutely perfect over here. If you make it too correct here, you can throw this out a little bit at this at this end. Okay, you'll see I actually uh, lowered the action quite a bit. I don't know if you can see it from the, that's the bass side. I don't know if you can see it from the video. This is the treble side. But it's come down really, really nice and low. And because of that, I had to lengthen the, um, bring the saddles right back to lengthen the strings to accommodate because there's not so much pressure, not so much bend in the string to pull it down anymore. So, something to watch for. But if you look on the tune, if you use a tuner to set the intonation, you'll find that uh, if you set the intonation correct over here in the main area that you play it in, this is most important. Um, that the notes are dead on, you know, your G, C's and D's and so on, uh, where you press mainly pressing down on the, uh, the top of the... Um, I still have some high... I need to do some work on the nut here. There's some high notes and I've been leaving it. This one here is special for a left-hander. I got a feeling that this needs to be the other way around because you've got the, the thin strings are kind of tapering this way like this. When you pick downwards with your thumb, this is good. You're picking upwards this way if you're using your fingers. And this third string here has got the highest note on it. You tend to miss it because it's going the other way. So I've got a feeling I'm going to... I haven't touched this nut yet because I think I'm going to swap these two strings over. But I've been doing the intonation first to see what gives. And obviously you can't get the intonation perfect on a 12 string guitar anyway. Any 12 string guitar because for the simple reason that these thin strings are compensated, should be compensated in a different way and, and they can't, there's only one, one uh, what do you call it, the saddle for the, um, the thing to slide on. So you can get the bass one right but the treble one's going to be out. So I favoured the, the main notes on all of them. Didn't worry too much about these high strings if they get out too far up the So you don't play these up there anyway. You may be playing these um, high up the neck and this works good. High up the neck is good. And so overall it's it's very good. I had some buzzes, um, uh, some buzzing from the electronics which I was quite concerned about. When I turned the switch off it buzzed and then when I which took, a, took this pickup out and then it buzzed and brought both pickups in the buzz went away but now it seems to have sorted itself out for some reason. I've got a feeling that there's uh, most of the wiring in here, all of the wiring that's in there that, that they did uh, at, at um, Harley Benton is not shielded, although it seems to be okay. And the new wiring I put in is all shielded. Uh, I feel that it would be a good exercise at some point is just to take all of it out and uh, swap these around so that these are in the conventional position, you know, swap them over so you've got... Um, the volumes of the right way round and um, because it's a bit confusing when you change guitars you know your brain's all programmed for this way around and and just rewire the whole thing um, it would be a good project for I'd say take a couple of days over it it's really uh, and get the right right equipment and make sure that your soldering skills at this point are very very good but I'm happy I'm gonna leave it like this for the moment and um, yeah it's sounding really nice on the amplifier and it's a perfectly good and excellent really um, Rickenbacker copy and as good really as the Rickenbacker. The pickups sound great and uh, you know Rickenbacker is obviously probably a better instrument but I don't know. I haven't had one myself. Uh, I don't know what they're like. But this is really as good a 12-string guitar as I've ever had the pleasure to come across. So I'm very, very happy with it. I think I paid 220 something 
euro for it. And this guitar will last me the rest of my life and I'll keep it forever. You can't really, um, once you've got one of these things, that's it. And if you study other players like this, you'll see, you know, George Harrison, the likes of the Paul McCain, that they've kept their guitars that they were given, the Rick Rickenbacker 12 string, that they still have them and they still use them. And so, um, you know, after many, many, many years. So all in all, I've got, these are the three guitars that I'm using now and um, quite different. Or, or each each guitar is completely different and suited for a different style of playing and a different sound. And um, there's a right song. You know when you're on the right song because everything works good. And and when you're on the wrong song, you think, oh my God, I wish I had a particular instrument, one of these three. And then you know you need to swap over to uh, to one of these particular guitars. So there you go, three-piece suite.